Welcome back to 4 News. Thank you so much for staying with us. A new record has been set. Japanese marathon swimmer Yuko Matsuzaki left the shore of Sandy Point, North Caicos at 6.50 this morning. And at 1.26 p.m., she completed a feat never before attempted, completing an open water 21-kilometer swim from North Caicos to Providence Isles in just over six hours. We expect this journey to take about uh, five and a half, six hours, depending on the currents. The conditions today look, look favorable. The major challenge will be the uh, cross currents between the islands, between the keys, but uh, we're confident Yuko will, will handle that uh, just fine. We expect to get into Grace Bay Club. Grace Bay Club will be the finish uh, between uh, noon and one o'clock. Room number one, smile. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. One of the biggest concerns is, of course, hydration, because it's a warmer temperature and a warmer water. And when we're swimming, we don't realize that we're actually sweating, and uh, you can lose quite a bit of fluid. Uh, so this is always a concern whenever a long time in the water. Okay, see you in the Grace Bay. Bye. <laughs> Big rule is don't grab the board, you know, swim on your body, you know, use your arm and leg, that's it, no feet, no paddles, no jet skiing, anything, you know, just swim. Boat crew always stay with me, right next to me, because uh, they need to tell me the direction, also they need to give me a food, because uh, I need to take a drink and some jello things every 15 minutes. So, then I was counting, okay, yes, what yes, time is now? Time so, first. every 15 minutes I was counting. Yes, all right, good. So she's having a drink with some electrolytes in it to replenish them because she will be using them up over the long course of the swim in her sweat. She um, is in salt water, so sometimes if she's finding it too salty, tasty, she'll ask for just water just to clean out her mouth. She takes some food, little bits of food about every half hour. You don't want to take too much because it can cause cramping. So she'll just, during the entire time, taking little bits of food, either something sugary like a cookie or like a jello. When we're doing a swimming a short distance and where speed is the element, uh, we use everything we can to get our speed, like in a sprint. But when we're doing a long distance swim, because the legs contribute very little in the front crawl or the Australian crawl, um, they burn a lot of energy to be that's kicking. Good, so once good. in a while she'd give a kick to give herself redirection or to propel herself out of the water to eat or drink. But most of the time she's using just her upper body. Doing well. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a challenge to keep the boat straight so that um, I don't get spun around and don't drift away too far. So just, just being patient with it and um, it's going as soon as we're going okay. We're, we're picking the straightest line rather than the easy route. If we hug the shoreline, you might add like another mile or two to the, to the total distance. Um, so that would be a lot more time and it would probably be easier for her, I guess, but she wanted to pick the straightest line that she could, she could swim, so that's what we're trying to stick with. Uh, Yuko's uh, continuing to keep up a very, very strong pace. We can see that the wind has picked up there's a lot more chop out there, but she's dealing with it very, very, very well. Um, we have to continue to keep her a little bit on course. I gotta make a course correction for her right. Oh, to the right here. Gotta give her the yellow, the red card. There we go. Red card is not a uh, disqualification. And the red card is just simply indicating she's to go to the right, which she has done. So we gotta keep giving these signals here. So we're now looking at 5.7 nautical miles left. We had 10.9 altogether, so we're at about halfway point. Halfway? Yeah. <coughs> and she's keeping up a pace of uh, 1.7 knots is her average speed so far. We're now about 7 miles of the 11 nautical miles into the swim, so her body is definitely feeling the strain and the stress of the swim. She's been hydrating along the way, so she's still feeling in good spirits and good strength. She's definitely burning up a lot of calories, and um, so we are trying to get her some feedings in about every half hour or so. She's taking some small doses right now, so she is definitely getting a calorie deficit, but she still has her strength. 
She's definitely going to be having pain in her shoulders after the repetitive action. She normally does. She said she's feeling better than she usually does at this point of the swim, though, so that's good news. Getting into the last leg here as we pass uh, Little Water Key, uh, soon to uh, be approaching uh, Leeward Channel. It'll, that'll be the last tough spot. She'll have to battle a current there. It's been pretty bad chop uh, most of the way here, but now it's calmed down a bit. Um, but uh, Yuko is looking very, very strong. Uh, but this is, there's no question about it, this is a tough swim. Well, I think the biggest challenges were these uh, wind gusts and channel currents that she had to fight to get through. But even off the, most of the islands, there was still quite a uh, cross current that she had to deal with. We're approaching Flamingo Cafe here, where we're going to pick up uh, about uh, five youngsters who live here on the island, and they're going to accompany um, Yuko on the rest of the way into Grace Bay Club. I, when I was swimming, I saw Stingray. Stingray was way faster than I. I <laughs> please stop the wind. But the middle parts, after the middle parts, wind stops, I stop. I have not gone. That was the hardest. Go you go! Go you go! Very beautiful, very very. It's it's easy to swim for because uh, it's not very deep. Oh, you know what? A little tired. <laughs> I didn't know this this you know ocean has a current. The I encountered two uh, you know some strong current two or three times. I I like oh, I didn't plan to pass through, but you know I made it.